Welcome to my channel. I'm Kim Ferguson and today is Christmas on the 25th and it really is December 25th. So Merry Christmas to you and yours. I pray that uh, you've had a blessed holiday and a wonderful week ahead as we get ready to celebrate the coming new year. I wanted to go ahead and share with you a finish it up Friday. This was actually finished up on Friday, December 17th. But because it's Christmas related, I'm saving it until today, which is Christmas. So this is the Holly Jolly Scrapbooking Workshop from Close to My Heart. And it's from the year 2019. So not too far behind on getting this one done. So I'm feeling pretty good that I'm getting through my workshops. And that was a huge goal for me for the year 2021. In 2022, I'm hoping to stay current with my workshops so that I'm better prepared to get on here when things are still available. You can still go on to my Maker website and click on online only and you can type in Holly Jolly and see if there's still anything related to this Christmas themed uh, paper or embellishments. So let me share with you what I have done. I haven't changed up too much of this. But on the first layout, they're using, of course, there's always the instructions, but on this layout, they're using this polka dot background for the base. But when I turned it over, look at what I found. Christmas packages. And I loved these. And so I was heartbroken that something as generic as this is what would be used on the page and I would lose these presents. So what I did, of course, is I cut them down. So I, I gutted, I gutted my paper at first and I was still not happy with that because it still just, you know, took too much and I, I wanted the present. So on Thursdays, I participate in a Zoom with other crafters and um, one of the people in there was a uh, her and I were alone and I was telling her that I was frustrated with this and I swore that there was some old close to my heart paper that looked like this like back from the 90s you guys but when I found it it was only eight and a half by 11 and I only had one sheet so that wasn't going to work and so she's like use your paints so I did so I got some white acrylic paint watered it down used a bowl with my paintbrush and I just simply splattered on top of some green paper that is obviously it matches this so it's clover so yay so thank you to that crafter I don't know if she wants her name on here so I just owe her the credit for it and then Amanda with crafting with Amanda is always reminding me that I need to use my shimmer brushes so I don't think you can see it on here <clears throat> probably on the bigger piece, but I did take the shimmer brush and I splattered it as well on my layout. And so it's got the shimmer. So just another way for you to see how you can take something that is a suggestion. If you're not happy with that suggestion, like I didn't want to use this paper, what else can you do to replicate what it is that you do like about something? So problem solved, layout created, right? And our ultimate goal is to get things done and use up our stash. So here are the two layouts. Something that I get really frustrated about is the flipping and turning of things because it's stapled together. So this time I'm like, just rip it apart, Kim. <laughs> it's okay, it's yours, it belongs to you. So I ripped them apart so that I could lay it out on my craft table so I could see the spreads together rather than flipping the pages back and forth. So if you're like me and you are like stuck that no this is the way it is it's okay to rip it <laughs> it's okay to take it apart so let me get to the actual layout here we go so it's deck the halls i did not put any photo placeholders on here nor any photos because i just did finish this up last night so here is that layout and again you can see where i have splattered that acrylic white paint let's see if you can see the shimmer I'm not sure if you can or not, but there is some shimmer and glitz on there other than the glitter paper. So real happy with how that turned out. So I pretty much did exactly what the layout shows. It just took me getting over that hurdle of not wanting to use that gift paper. So that took me a little bit of time, but once we got the splatters on there, I was good to go and I did copy it. 
So because my photos are in there, things are kind of just temporarily adhered down. There's, you know, I can go under here with my picture under here. So it's still very flexible. These are three dimensional. So it comes in three parts. You glue them together and then they go down on the page. So you can see how that will really lift up in your page protector. So I'll probably lay them down when it comes time to put it in the page protectors. There's some green enamel dots, some stickers, glitter paper, and good to go. I did do more black on this side than I did over here because I wanted this green plaid to pop more off of the green background. If you look at this, it, it, is, it doesn't have the black behind it. So I did add that. These are already kind of backed on other colors that help them to lift off the page. So I didn't choose to back these with black scenes that it was on this black background. So I think that's about the only thing that I did differently were those few little steps. So that is project one, the left and right sides. Let's go on to the next one. Let me find, okay, so here is the design for that. I didn't go around and add the black outlines and I didn't do any paint splatters. Whoops, that is not the right one. That does not match. One of these things is not like the other. Is that the New Street Days? Yep. <laughs> so like I said, I didn't go around and outline it. I think I'm going to wait until I pick out what I'm going to do with this. So they have a picture over here, a picture in the O, and a picture over here. I'm kind of looking at this as more of a title page for a Christmas album um, rather than sticking a couple pictures in here. If you follow me very long, I have a hard time just limiting, you know, my pictures to the real estate of the embellishments. I figure this is more important for my pictures. So I'm not quite settled on how I'm going to use this. This isn't, isn't completely glued down. I can lift this whole joy up and do something under it. So I'm going to hold off, but Pretty much everything else I did copy. I just didn't do the black outline and the splatters and I didn't do any journaling lines yet. So I do really like this. I'm just not sure how I want to make that work into my scrapbooking style, but it's finished. It's finished up Friday. All right, now let's go to this one. Let's see, where's that page? I had them all in numerical order and then I shifted everything. Here we go. So this one is on, it's an overlay and it's on the back of the smoothie paper. And again, I followed this one with the exception of not putting the paint spotters on it, but I do have all the enamel dots. I do have all of the stickers in place and the photo will go here. And a photo can go up here, but again, it's only two photos on a huge page. So going back to that, I don't know what I want to do with this yet because that's too little of photos on a layout for me. So stay tuned. You know, I don't know if I'll ever show this again, but still not settled. But again, it's versatile enough that I can, I can make some changes to it if I need to. But again, finished up. All right. And then I love snow globes. So here is... The final page that I'm showing right now, I'll refer you back to December 20th. My Craft IQ video focuses on this layout right here and what I did to it. It's very different. <laughs> so go back. I'll put a link in that and, you know, at the end of the video, there will be a link back to my Craft IQ video from December 20th. But uh, I really changed it up. So here again, one picture on a snow globe. So again, this would probably be a good title page. Now, if you have this Holly Jolly workshop and you haven't done it yet, let me tell you, this is reversed. Threw me off completely. If you look, the large glitter tree is over here. It's here. There's no glitter on the other side, so it had to go this direction. So my brain had to work backwards. <laughs> so you can see that I, I made it work, but um, I ended up with this over here, you know, so I, I had to kind of shift things, but I didn't realize it till I started gluing some things down. And fortunately I was able to recover once I got down here. There's a hot mess underneath all this because I had to rip up the green papers. Um, so it's just, you know, make sure that you dry layout things. And I did, but I didn't pick up on that soon enough. So anyway, it came together. It looks fine. You can't tell that there's a big old ripped up spot back there. It's, it's, that's the fun part about paper crafting. There's always a way to cover it up, right? And you can see that I did move the plaid over to one side where they have it coming out on both the left and the right of the photo. 
So I hope that this inspires you to maybe for the year 2022, maybe work on getting those workshops that you've been purchasing and just dashing away, get them out and start working on them. And uh, we'll just look for a good 2022 of being successful in our craft rooms. Thank you so much for a great 2021. I hope to be in here next week with some New Year's um, ideas and paper crafting. Uh, here's Allie. She's up here saying Merry Christmas to all of you. I pray that you are safe, that you are healthy, that all of your loved ones were able to be with you today. I pray that you received many plentiful gifts of not just material items, but love, friendship, compassion, joy, and all the lovely Christmassy sparkly things. I thank you very much for all that you do in watching me, commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing. I look forward to our 2022 crafting. Say Merry Christmas, Allie. Take care and bye-bye.